I just want to put this video together for why I'm back in the UK um, because it's a strange thing about the way expats often think where if somebody's leaving a country it's assumed it's monetary um, because a lot of people don't see it from a family perspective for me um, I'm not in my 60s where the majority of expats are I'm 40 I have um, children I have a wife I'm not there for retirement I was never there in the same way that other guys are um, what I mean with that is is when I went to the Philippines it was to uh, meet my wife spend time with her and I initially only went there for a two-week holiday because um, we were st we were just friends at the time but things developed and then I made the commitment to move over there and this is where things developed from now we've developed business in the Philippines the business will stay there regardless if we're in the UK or Philippines, Dubai, um, Canada the business will still continue now when we first started things out in the Philippines we decided that we needed to create a base for long term um, this, this was predominantly for not only if we ever wanted to go back full time but also if we wanted to travel or to help with April's parents um, retirement because there's always stuff that needs doing and they, they can do stuff um, out there so it was a it's not like the normal expat setup that most of the other guys do because for me I'm still quite young I still got uh, a good career I'm still developing my career um, I'm moving up the ladder um, this year I'm going back back to do a degree um, while I'm still working full-time so it's not the same way that most other people work and people forget that over the years I spent time in the UK working I worked in Qatar, Oman, Dubai it's not like a permanent fixture so if people think I'm just quitting on the country blah blah it's not that we've actually reached the goals that we would set back in 2007-2008 we have bought the building next door we've renovated it we've now got a fully functioning office we've got several apartments we've got um, an enterprise there that will continue to grow and it doesn't need me to be there for it now the UK side was always gonna happen because of the children because our kids need a good education I can't get in the Philippines also the way things are there there's no real future for the kids out in the Philippines where the UK can give them the world now if you imagine uh, you can mix with the rich kids you know spend a lot of money on education and stuff in the Philippines but where does it go you know you get educated where they're gonna go they still got a Philippines passport but this way they come back to the UK get educated in the UK have a network of people from the right schools in the UK so that they have the opportunities to take their lives as far as they want to take them I can't do that in the Philippines it just ain't gonna happen um, I'm not really interested in uh, dwelling on too much on the Philippines side or why I don't like it um, but let's just say a lot of the money is made out of corruption and I'm not interested in my kids mixing with that side of life in the Philippines and I also don't see the same opportunities with a Philippine passport compared to a UK one. So if they're educated in the UK, they get a UK uh, education, they can go to good schools, good universities, and they have the UK passport that opens the world. Now for my wife, it's also something we'd agreed to do a long time ago because I want my wife to experience Europe, experience good food, 
experience good wine. They experience the attractions and natural sightseeing that Europe has. I can't do that for my Philippines. Because I, I look at many people in the Philippines, most of them are looking inside, looking out. It's like being in a fishbowl. You can see the things outside there in the rest of the world, but you you can't get through the glass. You know, you can't touch it. So how could I be a good husband and not look to do this for my wife and do this for my kids? Now, if you ask me the same questions about a single, I would say I'll stay exactly the way I was, where I just come in and out of the country have a good life, tax free, living you know, living the dream. But it's not it's not the same with a family. And they uh, that's one of the things that a lot of guys don't see is they forget about kids. And I know a lot of them have you know, most guys have a partner, but most do not look at taking their partners back abroad. And they're like, I'm moving to the Philippines, you can like it or lump it. You know, it's often like that. Now for me Okay, that's your choice. Nothing to do with me. You know, if you told your partner that at the beginning and whatever, that's fine. You know, you're not breaking any promises. You committed to what you were saying. But for me, I I have a not only an obligation as a father and a husband, but also a moral obligation to do what I'm doing. And to be honest, I'm quite happy back in the UK. Uh, as much as I am the Philippines, because I don't have the same sort of uh, aggressive hate of places. Now, there's downsides to the UK, there's downsides to the Philippines. But for me, I could do either. And I don't mind doing both. You know, I don't mind doing six months here, six months there. Because, to be honest, I would rather do three months in three months. Because if I come here for three months, did a ballot buying box, I could ship all this food and stuff I'm missing back to the Philippines and by the time I got to the Philippines it'd be arriving and then I could have food for a few months and then come back for work for three months then go back I'm fine you know this is this is the the big thing is it's not like a normal relationship that most expats have firstly I work abroad anyway I, I'm always abroad um, I do a lot of stuff in and out of the country I go to the Philippines like last year I was there all year, but prior to that I had done um, three and a half, four months in Oman, then I did some time in Qatar, and I did a little bit of time in Dubai, and then I'd gone back to the Philippines. So you can imagine, most people wouldn't find it acceptable for a partner to be abroad for half the year, every year. But I have a great wife. I have a great wife that has uncles that work in uh, as merchant seamen uh, they work in engineering um, civil engineering we got relatives that are, you know they're abroad and they're abroad for a long time every year now that was the other thing I was looking at when I, you know all these decisions were made so if I educated my kids in the Philippines the opportunities that would give them a salary that's even worth getting out of bed for or abroad so they would be doing exactly what I'm doing now spending most of the time abroad while the ki their kids, their partners are in the Philippines that's not a life you know like I said it doesn't bother me now because I'm still quite young um, but I'm getting to that stage where I want to not step back but I want to progress my career. I can't progress it by staying in the same contractual roles. Um, and I can't study in the Philippines. The degree needs to be done in the UK because of the, the work I do. It's got to be to a certain standard. So I can't do that from the Philippines. At the same time, my wife cannot progress her career from the Philippines. And the kids, same thing. You know. If they get a, if they get qualified as a nurse in the Philippines. We all know when they go abroad, they have to go and retrain to 
to be uh, up to a standard that's acceptable in another country. For me, I might as well just rip that bit of paper up and say don't bother. Because the reality is, if the standard in the Philippines isn't high enough, people should be complaining more to say it should be to an international standard, not accepting sec second best. I'm not running them down, the fact is, the government isn't doing their job. Because if they were, you wouldn't need it. Because, prime example, I work in facilities management. I work internationally. Now, that is not because um, I got educated in Mozambique or something. The fact is, they're all done to a UK standard. And the UK standard is recognized worldwide. In the same way, there are certain courses that you can do from not only UK standard, but you can take it to an international standard which has some variables. But the fact is, it's there. I can do it in country. I can do it in the UK. Philippines doesn't offer it. Now, how could I, how could I not give that to those opportunities to my wife and kids? Now the next thing is people go, oh, what about if your wife runs away with another girl? So first thing, my wife isn't like that. But secondly, if if that's how your relationship is, why are you in one? Um, my whole thing with my wife is based on trust and actually the res being responsible. It's not about being selfish and all about me. It's about the family as a group. And I'm expecting a hard year this year because I, I basically got to try and double up my income um, to make everything happen. But I'll do it. And it's not because of, for me, because I could live on probably a third of the salary I earn at the moment, but the fact is, I want my family, and I can only do that by putting forward a commitment to my family that I will deliver what I promise. So, if, if you're thinking, oh, Matt must be broke in the Philippines, we've sold nothing since I've been away, in fact, my 4x4 will be getting fixed next month, um, they... My motorbike's still there, we still got the other house, we're actually going to be renovating the upstairs this year as well. There's nothing changing in the Philippines in a negative way. The UK side is going to develop, and it's going to develop at quite a fast pace, because I'm limiting my cost to increase our potential earnings here, so that we can do what we want. This By by Christmas this year, I'm expecting things to be pretty pretty good and in ship shape. So, Yes, I'm going to be a lot away from home a lot, but one thing I will say is that I don't hate the Philippines. I, I talk about what I call bugs, but the thing is, they are exactly that. In the same way, the UK's SOR notices, the statutory uh, off-road notification, is a bug. The UK has a lot of bugs, the same as the Philippines. But people need to define and understand the fact that these are not hates, these are just things I bring up because it's like you should be aware of. In the same way, when they do visa processing, you need to be aware of. It's not, it's, it's, it's a basic guide, it's not actually set in stone, and you might find that some of the stuff that bugs me doesn't bug you. But at the same time, it's not really going to ruin my life. It's, you know, it's just simple stuff. Um, but anyway, I just want to say why I'm back in the UK and that things are things are pretty good. Um, there's nothing really to write home about right now because I'm just getting in the start stage. It's January. I'm expecting things to be slow to get moving, but once it does, the, there'll be some huge leaps forward this year. Okay, thanks. Thanks for listening. I know I go on a bit. <laughs>